All right, folks, it's uh, time for us to start our session, our webinar today. We're going to be talking about unlocking the power of AI with Apicero, which is a part of NTT Data. We're here to talk about charting your journey, your AI journey with MuleSoft and Data Cloud. So let's dive in. We know we'll have a few folks who will be joining late. Um, don't worry, we will be recording this session today. In fact, it's being recorded right now. Um, and we will send a link out to the recording later on. But before I go any further, let's do have a moment of gratitude. Thank you for all of you who are taking the time to join us live. Thank you for all of you who are gonna take the time to watch us later on demand. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to learn about AI and data cloud with MuleSoft with our partner, Apicero, which is a part of NTT Data. Now, before we go too much further, also we are gonna be having a roadmap session at the end of this particular presentation. So please keep in mind that all things are subject to change when it comes to the roadmap. When you're making decisions about your business and about your operations, those financial decisions, those technical decisions, what have you, keep in mind what's in the product today and what's available today is what is available today. So any forward looking statement or future looking statements are subject to change. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're making those plans. Now, let's go over the agenda that we have set today. We do have an hour of power, and we're going to have a lot of information that we're going to be throwing at you as you think about uh, MuleSoft and Data Cloud. Uh, we'll go through the introductions here in a moment on who, our, who the speakers are on our side. Then we're going to do a product overview. We're going to talk about how NTT Data makes the difference uh, when it comes to AI and data cloud with MuleSoft. We'll talk about some of the different customer success stories that we have out there. And as I said later on, we'll have a roadmap. Now, throughout the session, we fully expect folks that you're going to have lots of questions. We will be saving the Q&A towards the end. So once we get through the content, we will open it up and we'll make it available for everyone to, to ask their questions using the chat features that we have available uh, within Zoom. But before I go too much further, one thing that I would love to do is, um, well, I almost jumped ahead myself. First off, let me just tell you who I am. My name is Donnie Hall. I am a strategic partner account director here at MuleSoft, uh, working with partners such as Apicero, which is a part of NTT Data, um, in the Americas and Latin America. We've got Neelish, who is one of our strategic, uh, excuse me, our principal strategic client architect here at MuleSoft. And we've got Paul, which is a part of Apicero, a part of NTT Data. He's the chief technical officer over there. Now, before I go any further, Paul, I would love for you to kind of take a moment and set the stage about today's conversation and why it matters. Yeah, thanks, Donnie, and uh, pleasure to be here, and thanks everybody who is attending. So today, just to set the stage, what we want to talk to you about is you know how better data can create a better AI and that ultimately creates a better customer experience, right? So um, by better data, what we mean is relevant data, right? We we talk to a lot of clients, a lot of customers that have a lot of data. Um, they know they want to do AI. So what do we do with that data, right? So we want to make sure that it's relevant, right? What is the problem you're trying to solve? Who is the audience you're trying to reach to? as far as accurate data, right? Bringing in accurate data that can help these AI models make the right decisions and stuff like that. Being complete, right? Which means, you know, do we have the history behind the decisions and the right data to help AI make the right decisions? And then consistent, which is very important in this context in terms of, do you have the right data model, you know, to present the data and to help the AI learn? Uh, timely is another consideration. Do you have data that is consistent and timely? Is it near real time? Is it batch? How old is the data that your AI models are making decisions around? Um, volume. And, and we hear clients and customers loud and clear that you have a lot of data. Um, what data do I need to help the AI and how do I get there? And we'll talk more about that. Uh, ethical, which is very important, right? Like how do you protect the data of your customers and make sure that you're using them the right way and protecting their interests? And how do these products help with that? Secure, um, in, in terms of the data that you're using, how do you make sure that you protect it? And that the data is in transit, more importantly, we'll talk a little bit later about how we make sure that the data in transit is also secure. And then available, as I mentioned, you know, is it batch, is it real time? Um, I think we would all agree that if you wanted AI making decisions and making recommendations for you, that you want to make sure that it's the most recent data and it's available 
to you. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, that provides better AI, how it provides better insights, classifications of that data, recommendations, more of that predictive analytics that I think a lot of people are used to. And then now how Salesforce has offered more of the generative AI functionality around content generation. How can we use that data to provide more personalized experiences, summarization of things like, you know, cases that have been reported or work summaries around uh, things that were done and and what was done to provide a better experience. And then personalization. Um, we will talk a little bit more about an example later of where we can use this data to provide more of a personalized experience and how you can resonate with the audiences that you want to attach to. And then uh, lastly, but not least, automation, um, which is very important. So not only is it important to have the right data, you have the AI to get better you know, insights into this data, but do more with it. What can you do with that data? And then the reason we're here is basically with better data and with better AI leads to a better customer experience. And that's why we're doing that. So looking forward to talking with you today around how we use better data to provide better AI, to provide a better customer experience. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Nilesh to talk a little bit more about the products around MuleSoft and Salesforce. Okay, great. Thanks, Paul. Hey, everyone. This is Dinesh Shumali. I'm a strategic client architect uh, with Millsoft. I focus primarily um, on our healthcare and life sciences group here uh, at Salesforce. Been with the organization for the past two and a half years. I'm based out of Chicago, and I'm really excited to talk on today's topic uh, on AI, which is uh, on everybody's minds. So with that, uh, let's get started. We go to the next slide. Um, before uh, we jump into Data Cloud or MuleSoft, uh, let me take a step back and let me start with the actual data problem that we need to have for a successful AI strategy. So in today's world, we know change is the only thing which is constant besides that and taxes, of course. Um, and uh, customer expectations are uh, around personalized engagements have changed a lot in the past couple of years, right? So for example, if I'm shopping at Amazon or I'm watching Netflix, I expect the same level of personalization and service from all the other businesses that I interact with every day. Um, most modern businesses are constantly innovating in order to provide those great customer experiences uh, just so that they don't become obsolete like Kodak's of the world or blockbusters of the world. But many businesses say that they struggle to get the level of information that they need. Um, they may not even have necessary skill sets to get that information. And all of this information uh, relies on the same foundation, which is data, as Paul mentioned earlier. Um, one of our British mathematician back in the days said, uh, data is the new oil. Uh, what he meant by that is data, similar to the oil, is not at all useful in the raw state, it needs to be refined, processed before it really becomes useful. And many of the customers whom I work with uh, are working on their big data strategy, but they are facing many challenges to get access to the right data to generate those uh, insights. Now, so let's now try to uncover some of those challenges. If we go to the next slide, <clears throat> According to the MuleSoft uh, Connectivity Benchmark Report, which gets published every year, any given enterprise has more than 1,000 different applications. And majority of your customer data is stored in bits and pieces uh, in these applications. So this could be coming from uh, web and mobile engagement or machine learning, or uh, some of the data could be housed in your external data lakes, warehouses. Maybe uh, some of your data could be in Salesforce CRM and many more. more. Uh, so when we talk to the customers, what I have heard is they approach the this accessing this data in multiple different ways. Like some IT teams are spending countless hours maintaining and building those point-to-point -point integrations, which we all know they are brittle, they are time consuming, and they are tightly coupled. Those point-to-point -point systems lack in governance as well as security controls. 
Uh, some of the other teams are being asked to do swivel chairs to get access to the data. They have to log in into 10 different systems to get the right level of data that they need. So now the question becomes, how can you bring all of this customer data together at scale and then generate meaningful insights from that data? So in order to solve this question, uh, Salesforce created what we call it as data cloud. So next we'll see what exactly is data cloud. Can we move to the next slide? I think, uh, did we skip one slide? Yep, there it is. So what exactly is data cloud? Um, so data cloud is a hyperscale data platform which uh, was built into Salesforce. It allows you to process petabytes and zettabytes of data and then generate actionable insights. For Mark Benioff, Data Cloud is the fastest growing product within Salesforce history that has grown organically in our Salesforce ecosystem. And to give you an example of the scale, Data Cloud processes more than 350 billion profile activations. And yes, that's billion with a B that these profile activations happen in a given month. So now let's try to understand what exactly is data cloud and what really uh, goes underneath the hoods. So when I explain data cloud for customers, I like it to break it down into three key components. First one is connect. In connect, we identify the right data sources and ingest the data at scale. It could be from your internal sources like Salesforce CRM, for example, or that could be your external sources. And you can ingest that data with out of the box connectors and APIs and integrations as we'll see shortly. Now, once the data gets ingested, the question becomes, how do we relate these large volumes of data points together, right? So the second point is harmonize. Using configurable matching rules, you can build these unified profiles for all your members or customers to build that true C360 view of your customer. These profiles then are kept updated and maintained in near real time as these activities continue to occur around those individuals. Now, till this point, we are trying to make sense of various data sources, but now once we have all this data harmonized, what benefit does it provide if we do not take any actions on that, right? So the last component uh, which I want mention is app. So you can utilize these unified profiles across this customer 360 in variety of different ways. You could create these intelligent marketing using attributes and segmentations, for example, in marketing cloud, or you can create or update those records back into the Salesforce CRM, or you could build those advanced data visualizations with Tableau, for example. So having all these features in a single platform really makes it easy to deliver those intelligent automated experiences across your customer 360. So now we have a high level of understanding of data cloud. Let's see how Mules, what is Mulesoft's role, for example, in this uh, innovation. So can we go to the next slide? Okay, great. Uh, so now as data cloud is harmonizing petabytes of information, MuleSoft further enriches and secures this data and generates actions and insights for your businesses. So with MuleSoft, you can enrich data sources which are natively available uh, with the data cloud by connecting data to any system across any cloud, even hard to reach systems like legacy systems or your on-prem systems. With MuleSoft, then you can take actions on those insights which are uh, generated from those rich profiles, as well as you can manage and secure your integrations and automations through a single pane of glass. Now having this a single solution to connect all of your data to data cloud and generating actions automatically, what we have seen is IT can achieve more than 27% faster development time, as well as deliver better customer experiences at scale. So now having said that, let's try to double click 
into two primary ways as to how Microsoft makes data cloud better. First one is going to be through connectivity and second is through automating actions. So uh, the connectivity piece, right? So uh, data cloud offers native connectivity to first party data sources like Salesforce, as well as third party sources like Amazon, S3, Google, Azure, Snowflake, and so forth. While all this data is necessary and important, the reality is companies have critical data stored into more than thousand systems, other systems like uh, what we saw earlier. This critical data could reside in industry specific systems, like for example, uh, fire systems for FinTech, or if you are in healthcare like me, I'm sure you have heard of Epic uh, storing all those EMR and EHR uh, related information. Uh, some of the data could be stored in your homegrown or legal systems, maybe in your ERP systems or other cloud-based SaaS systems, right? So MuleSoft has over 300 connectors to bring all of this data into data cloud. In addition to connectors, MuleSoft also provides accelerators, which provide end-to-end -end connectivity solutions with pre-built APIs and templates to connect these different systems with top industry use cases. So now once all your Salesforce and third-party data is connected into data cloud, Next, what we will see is how MuleSoft delivers value proposition with generating the actions based on these insights using automation. So if you go to the next slide. As we saw earlier, MuleSoft AnyPoint platform can connect any data from any system and ingest that data into data cloud. Now data cloud harmonizes all this data to create what we call it as enriched profiles, the unified profiles, and it gives you a complete view of your customers, what they care about, how they interact with your organization, right? So now once you have these enriched profiles, you can have AI models like Einstein, for example, it gives those AI models better context as to generate those specific and uh, personalized answers. So to give you an example, you can combine your CRM data from Salesforce, with maybe your product data and inventory data from your ERP systems or web engagement data from your external systems. Now Einstein can then identify customers who make frequent purchases and then start suggesting them uh, offers to strengthen that customer loyalty. So for example, Einstein could say, let's offer free one day shipping uh, for the customers, or let's give a 15% discount on the products that they have been rising. And then on top of that, what MuleSoft and Flow can do is now MuleSoft can start taking actions on these uh, generated insights uh, by Einstein. Using Flow, your uh, business users can develop automated workflows that sends your customers those uh, one day free shipping offers or 15% discount offers that they have been browsing. Your developers who use any point platform, they can write that data back into the system of records. So uh, for example, they can use MuleSoft to update the inventory systems or the partner websites, for example. All right, so now what we will see next is the MuleSoft capabilities as to how it can be used to deliver those great customer experiences as we saw earlier. We go to the next slide. Now, um, as some of you may have already seen or heard, Data Cloud has native connectors to ingest most of the critical data that need, and it can map from those first party as well as third party sources, right? So you may be questioning what exactly is the value of MuleSoft with Data Cloud. Now, in order to answer this question, I think we need to expand our thinking beyond data connectivity. MuleSoft ensures your IT leaders have highest level of visibility and control as to how the data is governed as well as secure. MuleSoft AnyPoint platform can centralize all that security as well as governance. AnyPoint visualizer and monitoring, these products give you your IT leaders capability to see how the data is moving 
from a single pane of glass. They can apply policies across all those APIs and integrations rather than having to secure maybe just uh, integrations just one by one. It, endpoint platform gives developers more flexibility to manage those complex data transformations using MuleSoft. So for example, Data View, uh, as some of the developers in the room may know, it allows you to enrich and cleanse the data prior to the ingestion. You can define your uh, mapping rules as well as write any complex rules across uh, different data structures. And then on the last part of taking actions on the ecosystems, MuleSoft gives developers the power to write that data back into the system of records. Um, so to give you an example, maybe a customer uh, can create, uh, let's say segment uh, called frequently bought products in data cloud. So what MuleSoft can do is uh, MuleSoft can, they can use MuleSoft to send this uh, segmented data to their supply chain management system to initiate uh, maybe the replenishment orders uh, on time and therefore they can reduce that risk of uh, your items going out of stock. And the last point which I wanted to touch upon is it boosts your uh, development speed and ROI with uh, API ABUs. So for very large transformation projects, uh, a combination of composable architecture as well as API-led design uh, allows developers to save that time and effort. And with MuleSoft, uh, developers can reuse all those APIs through exchange and uh, they can re reuse it across multiple projects so that they can move faster and faster with each integration effort. All right, so now having said all these things about capabilities of MuleSoft as a platform, as well as uh, integration with Data Cloud, let's try to bring all of this together to see what we have heard so far. So if you go to the next slide, so if you try to put all this together, uh, you can connect all of your data sources. Maybe they are within your uh, inside of your sales source or external system and create true customer 360 view of the customer. And then what you can you do is use AI to build those powerful apps with workflows, analytics, and designs more quickly. And you can build all of these uh, capabilities on a trusted scalable platform that can be used to deliver those personalized and connected experiences. All right, uh, so with that, I will hand it over back to Donnie. Sorry there, I was on mute. Perfect, thank you English, that was a great setup. Uh, now what we'd love to do is switch it back, Paul, over to you, and uh, you can talk about the NTT difference and help our help them understand their AI roadmap. Yeah, thank you, Dottie, and uh, thanks to Nilesh. And um, so what I want to talk a little bit about is how the products that we just talked about can actually help you with your own data and AI journey. So um, if we can go to the next slide, you know, the first thing I want to touch on is the thing I get asked the most often, right? is what are others doing, you know, in their own AI journey? Um, and how do we keep up with the competitors? And how can we, you know, provide these AI capabilities to provide that better customer experiences to our own customers? Um, so, you know, what we see in the marketplace, and, and again, I want to preference this by none of these are wrong, right? You know, if you have your own data engineer teams, your own data architects that can implement these things, that's great. Um, but what I want to talk about is just a little bit about, you know, if, if you do it yourself versus, you know, leveraging something like a MuleSoft and a data cloud to help you with it, how that can help accelerate your AI journey. So a lot of what we see is, you know, the competitors in the marketplace and the things that they're doing to kind of help accelerate this is obviously leveraging their own data warehouses and data lakes. Um, either they already have them or they're in the process of creating them. Also leveraging their own cloud platforms, leveraging things like AWS and Azure and, and creating their databases to kind of consolidate that, this data to be able to, you know, provide the data to the AI to, you know, make the decisions and predictions that's needed. Uh, big data technologies have been around for a while now where, you know, uh, organizations have been trying to do with their analytics and and then making the predictive analytics that, that you see and have seen. 
uh, data integration tools. You know, when it comes to data, uh, there's no shortage of how do I consolidate that data? How do I integrate systems uh, to bring together this data in a meaningful way, as well as additional data analytics platforms and BI tools? And, and the best thing about this, and especially with data clouds, we'll talk about in a little bit, and, and Les has already talked about, is how if you already have these, that's great, you know, and, and data cloud can leverage these um, and work with these products to, you know, provide the AI that you need to provide that better customer experiences. And then the things that we see, right, the challenges that I see and how something like a MuleSoft and data cloud can help you is around the complexity of this technology. Uh, maybe you don't have those data engineers, maybe you don't have these data architects to understand how to create these databases. Uh, to provide the data that's needed. And again, I mentioned the integration challenge. It's always there where MuleSoft is, you know, great in terms of providing connectors around legacy systems, databases, SaaS systems to pull the data together in a meaningful way. Also, you got to think about scalability when you're talking about large data volumes. I mentioned that earlier, right? You have a lot of data. Um, so how do you do that at scale? Also, do you want to be responsible for the maintenance and upgrades of these platforms? Uh, how do you manage that? And then probably probably most importantly, when it comes to AI, is always the concern around security and, and how do I protect that data, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit, um, but is a very important topic that a lot of people consider when they are looking to implement AI solutions. Um, so how do these solutions like MuleSoft and Data Cloud and Salesforce as a whole, you know, make sure that we secure this data and provide the trust that, you know, you expect to provide to your clients. Uh, the other thing is resource availability and cost, right? Do you have the resources in house to work with these other platforms and these other databases and stuff like that? And then there's always the hidden costs around infrastructure and things like that, that you might not be thinking about when it comes to budgeting for how do I implement an AI or data to, for to support my AI. Uh, data quality and governance. Uh, the one thing that you have to think about and lack of standardization is around uh, when you use these technologies on your own, you have to create these data models. So you have to figure out how can I bring this data together in a meaningful way to create these unified profiles so that way I can connect to an audience that's meaningful. Um, you have to figure that out all on your own. So again, my point here is not to say that these technologies are not you know, good for getting towards AI, uh, but there's things to consider, right? And, and what I'm saying here is, you know, MuleSoft and Data Cloud provide you a way to maybe accelerate this, to kind of go to market faster with AI. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, a scenario where that could help. Um, so if we can pull up the next slide. So here is just kind of an example of uh, a, kind of a real world scenario, right, of how this all comes together. Um, so I'm going to kind of start a little bit with a scenario and, and, you know, consider yourself as a marketer, right? Someone that has been asked that your company has came out with a new product. Everyone's excited about it. Everybody wants to get that out there. Everybody wants to like say, hey, we need to blast this out to everyone. You know, this is the greatest product that we ever created. But as a marketer, you know, how do you know what audience that's going to resonate to, right? What customers uh, is that product suited to? And, and today in, in segmented data and data being like spread across different systems, that's difficult for a marketer, right? You can imagine having to go out to, you know, analyze the activity on a website or look at an order history on something like an ERP and an SAP or look at third party data. It could be like social media or other databases like loyalty and, and stuff like that, as well as your own customer data that may be in a CRM like Salesforce. So as a marketer today, when you're asked to kind of promote that product, you know, where do you begin, right, in, in a segmented world? So what we're saying is, you know, something like a data cloud helps bring that data in a meaningful way, and, and MuleSoft helps in that regard. So as you can see here, kind of moving left to right, something like a Salesforce, data cloud provides out-of-the-box connectors to pull that Salesforce data directly into data cloud, right? So if you're already on the platform, you already have this customer data, you already have some history behind that, that's great. We can pull that directly in. But where a MuleSoft becomes extremely valuable in this scenario is these other systems like third-party systems, ERPs, your websites, stuff like that, where there's 
any point connectors that easily connect to these systems um, that otherwise you'd be responsible for the coding behind, you know, bringing that in and, and the difficulty behind doing that. And, and MuleSoft can also help in terms of doing that in either a batch capacity. So in terms of bringing in kind of a volume of data or doing it more in a real-time capacity, which with AI is very important, right? So as I mentioned earlier, having kind of available data, accurate data at the time that you need it is extremely important. So MuleSoft can help with providing that real-time, you know, connectivity to these systems to get the data in. So for instance, like as I'm navigating a website, the activities that I'm doing on that website, bringing that into data cloud to have that immediately available to start making decisions around that or the order history, the things that I've done in the past, making sure you have a complete picture of kind of what I've done in the past to kind of help make those decisions. And then, as I mentioned, you know, data cloud obviously has its own security and its own ways of protecting data. Um, and Salesforce has done a great job of providing a trust layer around the AI and data capabilities. Um, but what about that data that's outside that boundary, right? What about that data that's in your own databases or in your own systems that you have to bring in? In a little bit, I'm going to talk about how MuleSoft can help secure that data, making sure that data gets into data cloud in a secure way. So now once we have the data into data cloud, we can really look at, you know, uh, again, when I mentioned earlier about if you did it yourself, what kind of data model would I use? How do I model this data to make it more useful for AI? Well, Data Cloud has already figured that out, right? So there's the Customer 360 data model where um, it's already predefined and it's extendable. So not only do you have a data model already defined that you can map your data into, if there's other elements and other aspects of your data where you want to make decisions around or you want to maybe do formulas around multiple parts of your data to, to form a singular field, you can do that with Data, uh, data Cloud. And, and, and probably another great feature of Data Cloud is the fact that when you think about customer data across multiple systems, right, how do you get to that unified profile? How do I know that all this data that I have is about me? And with the identity resolution and reconciliation rules of Data Cloud, it makes it easy to kind of kind of define of like, okay, if I have this loyalty account, but I'm also this number in this system, how do I make that me, right? So Data Cloud makes it easy that once you get that data in, you can start creating rules around how do I identify me as a customer. And then once we've got to that point right now, you can really start doing things with that data. You can start doing calculated insights um, where you can kind of, you know, identify data for a particular issue or need. And then this is where now we start to empower AI. This is where you can use things like Einstein AI to kind of segment your data. So going back to if I'm a marketer and I want to reach out to these customers for this new product, I can start leveraging this data and leveraging Einstein AI to start kind of segmenting that data to know the proper audience that I need to reach out to for that particular product. And Einstein and AI can help you do that. And then at the end, right, now we can start doing things with that data, right? We can activate that data. We can send it to other systems. Let's say you use Tableau, for instance, or any other BI tool at an enterprise scale, I can start sending that data to that in a meaningful way. Or I can send it to something like a marketing cloud with, again, out of the box connectivity to send it to marketing cloud and then even leverage AI even more, right? To start creating more personalized content around the emails I send out to customers, around the marketing campaigns that I do, and what's going to resonate with these customers based on that product or the journeys, right? So how do our clients want to be connected to? Do they want an email? Do they want an SMS? What's going to resonate with them more? And even personalization around creating sites, around giving them the content that they want to see when they want to see it. So again, I, you know, the point here is that MuleSoft is a way to bring other data outside of Salesforce to a meaningful way within Data Cloud. And Data Cloud can help you curate that data, make it meaningful, and then sending it something to a marketing cloud or a service cloud for provide better customer service to resonate with your customers more directly, help marketers and customer service and salespeople do their jobs better, as well as even provide better data maybe to your overall enterprise analytics strategy. Um, so just kind of wanted to demonstrate kind of a real world scenario of how these pieces work together. So if we can move on to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about, again, 
how do we do this in a secure way? So as I mentioned, right, data cloud, your CRM apps, your Einstein, they all have security baked in, right? They already protect your data. And the Einstein trust layer has done things to make sure that the AI is responsible and is using, you know, private learning models or bring your own uh, models and stuff like that to secure. Um, they've already figured that out for you. But that data that's external to that, right? How do I bring that in, in a secure way? So again, MuleSoft as a platform, if you're connecting to these third-party systems, these SaaS applications, these legacy systems, they provide uh, ways to secure that data in transit, right? So there's API security. This is all baked in and all part of the platform. There's transport layer security in terms of like, uh, transmitting that data across networks and stuff like TLS, um, things like that, data encryption. So if there's certain, you know, personal information or private data that you want to keep secure, you can do that. Uh, I mentioned the network, the network access controls in terms of firewalls and things like that, making sure that MuleSoft's only talking directly to your network and, and nothing external to that. Role-based access. Are we looking at the right data? Does that person who's asking for the data have access to that data? Secure configuration management in terms of making sure the credentials that are needed to access, access these systems are secure. And then threat protection, you know, making sure that if you are opening up some of these systems to APIs and stuff like that, that they're being called by the appropriate consumers and, and nothing external trying to expose that. So that's just, you know, the beginning. That's just the ending point security around kind of how we access these systems. And then on top of that, MuleSoft provides ways of providing real-time monitoring, uh, making sure that the data is getting to the destination, right? So that's very important. So when you're talking about AI and making sure that you have that most recent data, did the data make it there? Did anything happen in transit? Did anything occur that you need to be aware of? Uh, MuleSoft can provide that alerts and notifications. So as I mentioned, so if something does go wrong, right, you're you're immediately aware that you can act upon it and do something about that. Uh, log management, obviously knowing what happened, when it occurred, stuff like that. So if you need to do root cause analysis, you have the data available to you. And then performance monitoring, right? Always keeping an eye on, you know, making sure it's performant, making sure that it's getting the data where it needs to be. Um, and also goes to the runtime analytics in terms of like, you know, the CPU you're using, stuff like that, um, and making sure that uh, things are done in a performant way. So basically what I'm saying here is that, you know, the products like Data Cloud, the CRM apps, and then Einstein Trust Layer, you know, MuleSoft can also bring your external data into these systems in a, a, a secure way with a, a lot of visibility. So if we can move on to the next slide, just kind of want to talk a little bit, you know, how can we help, right? So Apicero, part of NTT data, you know, how are we positioned to help you with this MuleSoft data journey to AI? Um, we are a MuleSoft partner. Um, we are a strategic partner, and then we specialize in system integrations and have done, you know, uh, a, a lot of end-to-end -end implementations using MuleSoft. So it was mentioned earlier about API led. So if you have a digital transformation journey that you're on, that you're looking to connect systems in a meaningful way um, and, and provide digital transformation, we can do that. Uh, we also specialize in connector development. So as I talk about legacy systems and SaaS systems and things like that, MuleSoft has a lot of connectors already available, but we are also a connector developer partner where we can build connectors if needed to these systems. And then one of the things, you know, about MuleSoft is that we focus a lot on training and enablement, right? So we are a training partner. We focus on enabling our clients, making sure they understand the technology, making sure they're successful with it moving forward. And then Salesforce. As a summit partner, we specialize in anything from new implementations of Salesforce itself to providing managed services focused on long-term success. So we, uh, you know, provide both new implementations with the clouds and plus, you know, once that's done, if you need assistance beyond that, we can provide that. And then more importantly, we're very familiar with the customer 360 data model. So we've been working with it for a while. We understand the objects and the fields available and can help you, you know, extend that model to provide the insights, predictions, and analytics that I mentioned. And all that together combined with both MuleSoft and Salesforce, we've completed over 3,600 projects. Um, you can go out to App Exchange. We have a 50 CSAT rating that comes directly from our clients. 
Um, so long story short, we've done a lot of projects with Salesforce and MuleSoft with a high customer satisfaction rating. And really what that means is both being able to do MuleSoft and Salesforce, we're uniquely positioned to help you activate your data cloud with the proper governance security that I mentioned, right? So if you're new to this AI journey, um, you have the data, you just don't know how to put it together in a meaningful way with between MuleSoft and Salesforce capability, we're here to help you, uh, you know, provide and get you started on your data cloud and AI journey. So we go to the next slide. Um, I just kind of want to end with, you know, we do have quick start options available for you. Um, so if you're interested in data cloud and you're getting started in data cloud and um, you want to kind of get started, we do have some packages available. We'd be happy to talk to you about everything from, you know, a, a quick four week engagement to get it set up for you. Maybe connect those initial systems just to get the data in there that you can kind of, you know, experiment and see how you want to take it to kind of the middle tier silver of where we'll bring the data in for you. We'll do the identity resolution and get to those unified profiles that I mentioned earlier to more of uh, kind of, okay, let's get the data in there. Let's get the unified profiles created and let's create an experience, right? Let's do something uh, with that data and send that data either to your BI tools or other meaningful ways. And of course, any of this is fully customizable, right? So depending on where you're at in your journey, we're happy to talk with you and see how we can put together a package that's meaningful for you. As I mentioned before, we have managed services that, you know, our intent is not to come in and just implement and say, here you go. Um, but we're here to support you after the fact to make sure that you have long-term success with the product. Um, so with that said, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Nilesh and, you know, thanks for having me and, and thanks for everybody attending. Great. Thanks, Paul. All right. So in this last section, uh, we are going to look at a few uh, roadmap items as a part of uh, Spring 24 release. And uh, again, these are just a few highlights, if you will, as a part of a big uh, release, which is coming up uh, early February. So uh, let's, let's go through some of these items. So the first capability which will be released as a part of this thing release is uh, data graphs. So as of today, uh, you'll see once the harmonization part uh, is done, you'll see those uh, all the data harmonized into a big data graph. After this uh, capability is released in uh, spring, what you will be able to see is uh, you will be able to build uh, individual data graphs from the fields which are selected from your primary DMO. Uh, DMO is a data model object. Uh, so from the primary DMO as well as the related objects, you will be able to select particular fields and only build in those specialized uh, data graphs. Uh, and then once these data graphs are built, uh, what you can do is you can uh, use those where more uh, rapid response or processing uh, is critical. So for example, if you want to quickly access a customer 360 profile for a given customer in sales service or commerce or marketing, you should be able to access those uh, individual data graphs. Uh, next capability, which is coming up in a spring release is um, BYOL, uh, which is bring your own uh, Lake with Snowflake as well as uh, Google's BigQuery that goes live as a part of this uh, spring, re uh, spring release, uh, which adds to the zero ETL capabilities of the data cloud uh, that has been talked so far. Um, uh, another exciting feature is a new connector for ingesting streaming data from Salesforce CRM will be released as a part of this uh, spring release. Uh, what this capability will allow is data cloud uh, access to have near real time access to any records which are updated in Salesforce sales service as well as uh, commerce cloud. So I'm really excited for this one. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, with the unified conversations for WhatsApp, with this feature, uh, you will now be able to ingest WhatsApp contact data as well as uh, tracking that data from marketing cloud and create those uh, personalized interactions with the customers. So till now, uh, uh, email studio, mobile connect, 
and mobile push were available as a part of your uh, standard marketing cloud data bundle in data cloud. But going forward after this uh, spring release, WhatsApp will be added to that list as well. So uh, I'm really excited for this uh, next release. And I think that's it from my side. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to your Millsoft account teams or uh, episode of part of uh, Entity Data for any questions regarding these exciting features. Right. Uh, with that, I will hand it over back to you, Don. All right. Perfect. Uh, Nilesh, Paul, thank you for that great content. So, folks, we're going to go over what's next here in just a second, but we've got about 15 minutes left. What I'd love to do is open it up to questions. Now, if you have a question for us, please post it in the chat, and then we will read those questions and answer them as they come in. If we don't know the answer, we'll let you know, but we'll follow up uh, when we send out the uh, related materials uh, as an action item on our end. Now, Paul, while we're waiting for people to start typing in the questions, and I know they're gonna have a few, one of the questions that I always get asked, and I know you touched on this earlier, is um, a lot of customers are getting asked, or a lot of the folks probably listening into this webcast um, are getting asked by their boss, something to the effect of, we have data, according to the news, I need AI, so please go make that happen. And so it's just kind of this general statement, I, I need AI. Um, I know I, know I wanna work with Salesforce, I know I wanna start work with MuleSoft, how do you typically, without giving too much, too much away of this of the secret sauce, how do you typically guide these customers as they start this AI journey and they're just not quite sure where to start? Does that make, question make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, and, and yeah, I touched on a couple of those points earlier, right? So I think one, um, we got to understand the use case, right? We got to understand like what you're trying to use AI for. Um, that goes back to, you know, having data that's relevant that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, so we want to understand that uh, because we understand there's a lot of data within multiple organizations and the intent is not to pull everything into data cloud. Right. So we want to make sure that we're pulling in the right data to write them to make the right decisions. Right. Um, and then the second piece of that is then understanding where that data exists within your organization. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, most organizations have a data segmentation problem where data is spread across multiple systems, right? Um, and that's where something like a MuleSoft can assist in terms of bringing that data together into something like a data cloud, where now you have a product or you have a platform to help you put that data together in a meaningful way. Otherwise, without it, right, certainly you could do it, but you got to figure out all that on your own. So you got to figure out what's my data model, you know, what database I'm going to use, how am I going to do this, right? All these questions where um, now if we can just get down to the business use case of where, why do I want to use AI? Who do I want to, you know, reach out to? Um, and then put this data together in a meaningful way. So I think in combination of using something like a MuleSoft data cloud, understanding your environment, you know, this is where we can kind of help accelerate that. Perfect, and that takes total sense. So uh, Nilesh, let me ask you this, and Paul, if you have an answer here as well. Uh, Nilesh, earlier we gave some examples of a few of our customers who have started down this journey with us, right? And so we're seeing some early returns. When we look across the different customers that you're working with, what are some of the other different, what are some of the other positive results or impacts that they're seeing from this I know we're getting we're just getting started in this journey, but I'm just curious what's been some of the low hanging fruit or successes that you're seeing. Yeah, I can certainly answer that. And Paul, maybe you can add uh, more color from what you have seen across your customer base. Uh, but uh, Danny, you 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 mentioned it right, right? We are still kind of getting started. We have, as of today, I am working with at least. Uh, five customers, which I can think of at the top of my head, which are uh, on this data cloud and AI journey. Uh, some of the low hanging fruits is uh, we have, what we have uh, developed and what we, uh, at, at least from my healthcare uh, uh, background perspective is we have developed an accelerator for population health to get that data from health cloud into the data cloud and generating these insights, right? So for the healthcare customers, so for example, um, if I am a provider and um, I want to know how many steps my patient takes every day 
uh, like 10,000 steps, 15,000 steps, whatever, just so that uh, I have that access to that uh, engagement data from that customer. I can have those insights and then I can prescribe my medications or my uh, next steps with that uh, with that customer or with that member for the well-being of that member, right? So we have developed these kind of assets and we will continue to uh, work upon it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, we will have more use cases as we go forward. Uh, Paul, uh, any insights from your side? Yeah, I think, you know, maybe if you look at it strictly from an integration perspective, right, I think the low hanging fruit is, again, bringing that data together in a meaningful way, right? Um, and I know we talk a lot about AI and the capabilities of AI today, but there's still a lot of value in being able to integrate systems, right? So I think using something like a mule soft where you can integrate systems and provide that data for other use cases, be it maybe on your web or other personal experiences, you know, uh, for real time data, you know, versus putting that together in something like a data cloud where you can do more with it in terms of analytics. There's a lot of value, low hanging fruit to kind of consolidate and integrate this data before you even get the AI. I think the, you know, the AI is the icing on the cake, you know, that makes it, you know, even better. Uh, but I personally, you know, when you talk about low hanging fruit, there's a lot of value in integrating data and providing that data that can facilitate other use cases maybe within your organization. Perfect. And actually that kind of leads into our next question. So we have one that's been posted to the chat. Uh, you know, which part of the organization can most benefit from AI, meaning where do you start first? And that, and that's a pretty broad one. I know it's, but I mean, it's a good, I mean, I think a lot of, we're going to go back earlier. A lot of organizations know they need to start. They're just not quite sure where to start. Yeah. And, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll take the first stab at that. I think it's, you know, looking at, you know, um, where maybe you could use the most help in terms of customer experiences, right? You know, um, as I mentioned before, we're doing all of this because of customer experience. And I think if you look at it from a Salesforce perspective, right, you can look at it in three, you know, maybe broad categories, right? Marketing, sales, customer service, uh, right? So where do you feel you need the most help? Um, you know, could sales benefit from, you know, identifying better leads and what can turn into bigger sales? Or do you need a better outreach for marketing in terms of connecting with that audience, like I mentioned before? Or customer service, right? Do you need better understanding of where you need assets, where you need, you know, people and, and summarizing the things that were done or automatically recognizing the issues that they had and giving them immediate responses? So, there's so much that you can do with this, right? That I, I would say personally, I would look at like what area needs the most help uh, from a customer experience perspective and, and, and start there. I don't think there's any one right answer. No, perfect. And I think you're right. It, again, it's kind of, it's situational to a certain degree. Um, and there's a lot of benefits across the organizations. Again, it goes back to the use case. Um, Neelish, I might ask you this one and then Paul, feel free to chime in. But with respect to, there's a question that's been posted, with, with respect to the data clouds, to, to the data cloud capabilities to map data versus Mule's capabilities via data weave to do the same, do you see an inflection point when clients should adopt Mule versus just use data clouds out of the box capabilities? Yeah, I think this is a interesting question and uh, I can take a stab at it. So uh, as we just saw earlier, data cloud, uh, data cloud does offer uh, native out of the box capabilities. So for example, if you have your customer data stored in your data lakes like uh, S3s of the world or uh, Google BigQueries of the world, if the use case dictates that you can ingest all that data as is, without doing any orchestration, without doing any enrichment, then I would say go for using uh, data clouds uh, out of the box native capabilities. If your use case dictates, I have to take that customer data, but I have to enrich it using data view. I want to append first name uh, space uh, last name, for example, right? So these kind of transformations, I want to do it before ingesting that data into data cloud. I would say use MuleSoft where you can now start enriching all that information in into data cloud because once the data goes into data cloud and you start mapping and harmonizing all that information, uh, you cannot 
do much of the transformations or enrichments uh, out there. So uh, again, I would say it depends upon uh, use cases and uh, we uh, advise the customers um, not to uh, make a decision worth of using one versus the other. I would say a combination of uh, all those uh, would help. No, perfect. And I, you know, I think the only thing I would add to that, or Paul, actually, I'll let you go first, and then I'll, I'll throw in my sales guy opinion. No, I know I, I agree with what was said. Right, I think um, you know if there's out of the box connectivity that something like a data cloud provides, why wouldn't you use it? Right, it makes sense. I think where some like a data weave uh, comes in very handy is when you have a lot of proprietary data, a lot of custom databases you develop, maybe custom applications where the data model is not well known, you know, data weave is very good and flexible and being able to work with those data models. Um, so again, that's where something like a MuleSoft is very useful because it makes it easier to translate that data that's maybe not as well known, maybe not as well defined and putting it into, again, that uh, customer 360 data model. No, perfect. And the only thing I was going to add to that, and again, this is a kind of more of a folk tale as a sales guys, you know, rainbows and unicorns kind of point of view is that whenever you're building something, right? Um, those out of the box connectors are very powerful, right? The, we built those for a purpose and for a reason, and they definitely add value to that. But as the as what you're doing as your data cloud grows and your AI capabilities grows, as all that grows, there's gonna be that complexity that comes in. And I think you have to start asking yourself, do I want to redo those connections twice? Right? Do I want to go back and say, I wish I had this capability that MuleSoft offered. I guess I'll go back and do it again, right? Or I wish I had the security capability that MuleSoft offered. I guess I'll go back and do it again. So it's up to you, right? I think um, the thing that we always say is that if you want AI, you have to have great data. If you want to have great data, you have to have great integration and security. If you want to have great integration and security, that really starts with MuleSoft. So that's the one thing that I would throw out there as well. We don't have any additional questions and I actually think we're coming up on time. This is a good place for us to stop. So folks, here's what's coming next. Uh, you're gonna get a one pager from Apicero, a part of the NTT data to start you on your AI journey. Additionally, Apicero, which is a part of the NTT data, is going to put out a thought leadership blog from Paul Kersey that will detail even more information on how to get started. As we send out the email with this additional information, there'll be a link that you can click on so that you can register to receive that blog or an update when that blog becomes available. Additionally, the link to this particular webinar and the recording will be available as well as additional resources. We're all just getting started on this journey. So please keep checking back uh, with Salesforce and MuleSoft and with Apicero, a part of NTT Data, uh, to keep up to date on the latest and greatest developments that we have around Data Cloud and AI and everything else to come. Again, this record this podcast has been recorded, so this will be available for later on. We thank you for your time. We appreciate you uh, taking an hour out of your day to be with us. We know you've got a lot of stuff going on, so uh, this was a sacrifice on your part, uh, and we appreciate that. Having said all that, have a great day. We look forward to connecting with you again at another date and time. Thank you.